Under sunny blue skies in Aurora, New York on the campus of Wells College, it's Express Baseball on AMCC TV as the pioneers of Alfred State University take the trip across Cougar Lake in this conference doubleheader. I'm Eli Fishman alongside with you for the action all day long. Xander Johnson, the southpaw, takes the mound for Wells in an AMCC battle, their first time facing Alfred State, the team that was the regular season champion in the AMCC last year, Wells. It's their first season in the conference. Johnson, the southpaw, will face this team on the other side of the ball, led by eighth-year head coach Mike Armstrong for the Pioneers. Tyler Peter, he leads it off in right field. Elijah Barinas is the third baseman hitting second. Tyler Korski hits third. He's in left field. Jack Huba plays first. He's the cleanup man. Joshua Gardner is the DH. He hits fifth. Caleb Walker hits fifth. He's the second baseman. Connor Keeper at shortstop hits seventh. Devin Mersman is the center fielder hitting eighth. And rounding out the order is Anthony Snyder with the right-hander, Ryan Kinney, on the mound for Alfred State. For Wells, Johnson comes to the mound having a tremendous season so far to this point. He is 1-1 one one with a 4.76 ERA. He's been stellar over his five midweek starts. He's started five games, all five of his appearances. The last game was April 6th against Greensburg where he was dominant. Six innings, two runs, six hits, eight strikeouts to only one walk. As the Express, coached by Ryan Stevens, is hit in his fifth year at the helm. 14-11 on the season, 2-4 and four in conference play with three straight losses for the Alfred State Pioneers. They are 9-20 and 20 overall and 4-4 four and four in conference play. Their most recent losses coming to Pitt Bradford. And they were projected to place first in the preseason poll. Some strong teams that the Pioneers have faced to start off this season. As Wells looking for a big win today. This first game is going to be seven. Second is nine in this AMCC doubleheader as the Southpaw Johnson with Peter in the batter's box. Kicks and fires. First pitch is a fastball just outside for ball one. And we are underway from Aurora. Mid-50s temperatures, beautiful conditions with the wind blowing left to right in the outfield as Xander, Xander Johnson kicks and fires. And the second pitch just low to make it 2-0. Petery, the senior right fielder, hitting 307 on the year with an 803 OPS and six RBIs for the Pioneers. Here's the 2-0 pitch from Johnson. Fastball just outside. And a three ball, no strike count to Petery to begin this ball game. Johnson, the southpaw from Homer, New York. Kicks and fires, 3-0. A fastball low for ball four and a leadoff walk. And for Wells, the offense has been stellar this season. Offensively hitting 310. And the pitching staff... Pretty solid in their own right. A 6-3-9 team ERA, which is top five in the AMCC. Elijah Barina steps in from the right side. The senior third baseman with a runner on first base. And no outs here on the top of the first. Here comes the first pitch. Shows bunt. Drops it down. It's foul. Dished up the first base side where Aaron Izquierdo will go pick it up. Barina is hitting 384 with a 928 OPS. This season, he's got speed on the base paths, as does Peter off of first base, who's got six bags on the year for the Pioneers. As Johnson gives a peer over to first base, the southpaw, long look and a pickoff attempt throw over. Zach Young applies the tag, but it's not in time. Peter backhead first. In the state for Wells in the outfield, McLean in left, Zach Odom in center, A.J. Campy in right. The long pause for Johnson and the 0-1 pitch. Breaking ball sky high, right side of the infield, giving Chase first baseman Young down the line, and it will drop foul out of play. So the count goes 0-2. On the infield, Lance Phillips at third, Jacoby James at short, Max Odom at second, Zach Young at first in the outfield, left to right, McLean, Zach Odom, A.J. Campy, and doing the catching, Aaron Izquierdo. 
for the Express. As Johnson. Long pause. Runner on first base delivers home 0-2. Outside on the fastball for ball one. Makes the count one and two. Barinas tied for third on the Alfred State roster with 17 RBIs on the season. Here's the one two. Breaking ball is blooped foul. Off the netting behind zone plate, and it stays right there, one and two. Looking to win the battle, Barinas, who was all conference last year. He's been a big piece of this team for the Pioneers of the past couple of seasons, manning the hot corner today. For the one two, a pickoff attempt over at first, back with another head first dive, Petery, back in plenty of time. As Johnson, long pause again. Here comes another one, two. Wave and a miss for strike three. Johnson gets a big first out here in the top of the first via the strikeout. His first of the day. Johnson's had strong strikeout numbers this season, 27 and 22 and two-thirds innings of work. And one out of runner on first, Tyler Korski will dig in from the right side. Korski hitting 312 on the season. Pickoff attempt over at first base. Picking it off the turf is young to keep it in front. Korski hitting 312 with an 817 OPS on the year. The transfer from Cuba Community College. Here comes the first pitch to the righty. It's a fastball. Called a strike on the inside corner. And the count goes 0-1. Three homers, 17 RBIs for Korski, the junior left fielder, in his first season with the Pioneers. Here's the 0-1 pitch. Fastball just low and away. Evens it up 1-1. Korski hit 333 at the junior college level last season with 38 games and 32 RBIs. As the 1-1 one, one pitch, Josh Lowe makes it 2-1. Johnson looking to harness that command early on. As the Wells Express looking to snap a three-game skid. Another pickoff attempt over at first. Not even a tag applied that time by Young. But Peter, he's obviously garnered the attention of the Express sophomore southpaw. Long pause from Johnson. Here's the 2-1 pitch. Fastball up and out. It goes 3-1. and one. And you can see, too, Johnson just taking his time. Long looks, and we've seen the pickoff attempts over the first base as well. Looking to battle back and win the battle. With one out and a runner on first, here's the 3-1 fastball in the dirt ball four. Pair of walks in the inning and runners on first and second with one out here in the top of the first. Now back to the plate for the plate four, Jack Caraba. Brings up Jack Caraba, but first Aaron Izquierdo, the senior captain and catcher for the Express, will head out to the mound for a meeting with Johnson to talk things over. Standing right on top of the rubber, going over things before they will face Caraba, who's been arguably the most dangerous hitter in the lineup this season for Alfred State. The senior first baseman hitting 324 with a team lead, 29 RBIs. As Johnson peers in. Gives the nod and sets. Runners on first and second. One out, no score here in the top of the first. Long peer over to second for Johnson. Comes home first pitch. Fastball in the dirt. Count goes 1-0. Caraba is senior for Alfred State. 
from Shahola, Pennsylvania. Here's the 1-0. Breaking ball runs inside. Ball two and a two ball count to lead it off to Caraba. In his third year as a starter for the Pioneers, all conference hit 293 last year. Here's the 2 0 pitch from Johnson. Fastball called strike on the outside corner. Gets one back to make it 2 and 1. 29 RBIs in 28 games. 10 ex extra base hits, but no homers for Caraba in his senior year. As Johnson, a long look over to second. Here's the 2-1. Fastball is going to be skied into deep right field, sending Campy towards the foul pole, and it's foul. Just to the right of the pole and over the fencing, out of play. And that evens the count at 2. Caraba attended Delaware Valley High School. Here with runners on first and second. One out, no score. Johnson, a long pier over to second. Here's the 2-2. Breaking ball grounded sharply through the right side of the infield. That's a base hit. Peter, he gets the wave around third. Here comes the throw. Not in time. RBI single for Jack Caraba. Puts the Alfred State Pioneers on the board. Here on the top of the first, one nothing. Team leading 30th RBI of the season for Caraba. And that puts runners on first and second. Still only one out for Joshua Gardiner. The junior DH today for the Pioneers. Johnson looking to limit the damage early on. Long look at first. Breaking ball grounded. Foul towards the third base coach's box. Where Mike Armstrong in his eighth season at the helm for the Pioneers. Ready to wave in the next batter. Johnson sets. Look around the base pads, comes home 0-1. Oh, Fastball outside, evens it up. Gardner has only had 18 at-bats total this season. Has struggled in those at-bats, hitting 167, but does have a homer and four RBIs, playing in only 13 games, primarily coming in as a pinch hitter. And looks like we'll see a mound meeting here. Ryan Stevens on a 1-1 pitch, is going to come out to the mound to talk things over with Johnson and Izquierdo. Stevens in his fifth year at the helm. Lengthy conversation between him, Johnson, Izquierdo, and Everybody will head back to their respective places as Stevens crosses over the foul line back to the first base dugout. And a pretty rare mid-at-bat meeting as Johnson will quickly come set. Peer in. Now it takes his time. Runners on first and second with one out. Breaking ball. Called a strike on the outside corner. So immediately gets one back. With the breaking ball on the outer third, first pitch after the mound visit, makes the count one and two. Now Johnson, the southpaw sets. Is Gerdo set up on the outside part of the plate? Fastball just outside, evens it up at two. Wells in the all white pinstripe uniforms with Wells across the chest in black lettering with a red outline. Same thing with the numbers on the back of the jerseys. With a red cap, back, black brim with the W logo on the facing. As the 2-2 is fouled off. Just got a piece of it off the glove of Izquierdo behind his own plate. Dribbles a few feet and the count will stay 2-2. Alfred State with white bottoms, 
powdered baby blue tops with yellow lettering and numbering with a black outline. Classic look to the Pioneers unis. Alfred stayed on stop, one nothing. As the 2-2 pitch, fastball grounded sharply right side and down the line foul out of play. So the count stays right there at two and two. Putting together a strong at-bat Gardner. With runners on first and second, one out. Another 2-2 pitch. A big wave and a miss for strike three. Challenged him with the fastball. And two strikeouts in the inning for Xander Johnson. Two outs looking to strand the runners where they are. Just like that bat for the Pioneers, number seven, Caleb Walker. And it'll be Caleb Walker, the sixth hitter coming to the plate. The junior second baseman hitting 267 this season. With the team lead in homers, that's four. And from the left-handed batter's box, with Korski on second, Caraba on first. In a lefty-lefty matchup, Johnson's first pitch. Fastball called strike on the outside corner. Count goes 0-1. Walker hitting 267 with an 814 OPS. Here's the 0-1. Breaking ball, big wave and a miss. And Johnson is one pitch away from getting out of this inning, allowing only one run. And stranding two runners on base. Here's the 0-2. Breaking ball outside. Brings this Kierdo out of his crouch. Makes the count one and two. Here's the pitch. Another breaking ball outside. We'll even it up. Walker, the junior from Deposit, New York. With runners on first and second, two outs. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Fastball. Called strike three on the outside corner. Johnson strands two. Gets himself three strikeouts in the inning. One run does come across on the RBI single by Caraba. But Johnson with some timely punch outs to get himself out of the jam and prevent any further damage. It's one nothing Alfred State on top as we head to the bottom of the first. But we will keep it right here because Wells will come to bat, and here will be the lineup that will step in the batter's box, presented by fifth-year head coach Ryan Stevens. We've got a switch at the top. Might confuse you because it's naturally confusing when you have identical twins as the top two batters in the order. But Max Odom, who's been the leadoff man for every single game, is going to move down to the two spot and switch spots with the everyday two-hitter in Zach Odom. So it'll be Zach Hitting first, Max hitting second, Zach in center, Max at second, Jacoby James, the typical three hitter, stays at his spot at shortstop. Aaron Escardo is the catcher, he hits cleanup. Zach Young is the first baseman, hitting fifth. AJ Campy in right field, hitting sixth. James Camacho is the DH today, he hits seventh. Lance Phillips, man's the hot corner, he plays third and hits eighth. Chris McLean rounds out the order in left field for the Express. 14 and 11 on the season, 2 and 4 in conference play. And on the other side of the ball is Ryan Kinney, the big right hander, listed at 6 foot 3 from Polk County, Florida. He's actually a NAIA transfer from the Xavier University of Louisiana. So played at a high level of baseball in the Southeast. For three seasons, he's an academic junior, transfers over to Alfred State. He's pitched 33 and a third innings this season, 2-2 two two over seven starts. 
33 runs, 36 strikeouts over that span. Zach Odom digs in in the leadoff spot for the first time this season. First pitch, breaking ball grounded sharply in the six hole. Backhanded by Kiefer, the shortstop, long throw on a first, not in time. The speed of Odom gets himself an infield single on the first pitch here in the bottom of the first. And that'll bring up Max Odom. Max hitting 273 on the season with an 853 OPS. And for Wells, big time speed off of first base where Zach takes his lead, pickoff attempt, but he's back just in time with a head first slide. Zach with 15 stolen bases in 17 attempts this season. First pitch. Fastball, just inside, kicks off the glove of Snyder, the catcher. Snyder's behind the plate on the infield, Barinas at third, Kiefer at short, Walker at second, Karab at first for the Pioneers in the outfield left to right, Korski, Mersman, and Peter, another pickoff attempt, close play. But back just in time again, getting his hand on the bag is Zach Odom after the leadoff infield single. 15 stolen bases this year, creeping off the first base bag. 1-0 to Max. Big wave and a miss on the fastball. Another back pick attempt by Snyder over to first base. Tag applied by Caraba, but not in time. So Zach Odom's obviously got the attention taken away from his twin brother in the right-handed batter's box. Long pause here. And the 1-1, wave and a miss on the fastball again out of the hand of Kinney. Makes it 1-2. and two. And Kinney throwing hard already. 1-2. Fastball again. This one hit sharply. Deep center field. Backtracking Mersman. He's not going to get there. It'll one-hop the wall. Scoring easily is Zach Odom tripping around the second base bag is Max, who will hold up right there with an RBI double to tie this game. 1-1 one, one, here in the bottom of the first. The Odom Twins doing what they do best at the top of the order. Zach with a single, Max with a double to dead center. Got challenged with a fastball over the heart of the zone, and I mean, you could hear the pop of Snyder's glove. Kinney with a high-velocity, high-octane fastball. And Odom just crushed that ball to dead center to tie us up 1-1. Jacoby James in from the right side. Here's the first pitch to James. Fastball roped in a deep right field, sending Peter Rebeck towards the warning track. He leaps up. It'll, he can't make the play. It'll bounce off the base of the wall. Scoring easily is Max Odom from second. Jacoby James in its second base, standing up with an RBI double to give the Express a 2-1 to one lead here in the bottom of the first. Mentioned it earlier on in the top of the frame, but this is a Wells offense that's top three in the AMCC, hitting 310 as a team with an OPS over 875. And we've seen that offense on display early. Aaron Izquierdo in from the right side. First pitch breaking ball. Probably a good choice to go first pitch breaking ball from Kenny because all we've seen is the fastball so far. And the count goes 1-0 and on Izquierdo. Hitting 390 with an OPS just under 1,200 on the season. Pickoff attempt over at second base. James back with a head first dive. A little bit of a close play, but kicks away from the second baseman, Walker, who was in and out with Kiefer. James with good speed as well. He's got six stolen bases in seven attempts this season. As Kenny peers in, a look over to second base, comes home. And the 0-1 called strike on the breaking ball at the bottom of the zone. Rather, that makes it 1-1. One one. First pitch was... One went away. Izquierdo with three homers, 18 RBIs in the year. 1-1, one, one, grounded right side, shuffling to his left. Is Walker throws on a first for out number one. James scurries up to third base. So 
There's some more help 90 feet away for the Express. As Izquierdo is retired and Zach Young will dig in from the right side. Young, the sophomore, hitting 317 this season, playing 24 games with a pair of homers and eight RBIs. First pitch, breaking ball just low. And Young with a homer the last time that the Express were in Aurora with a pinch hit solo shot against Castleton to make it a one-run game last Tuesday as the fastball skied foul down the right field line and out of play. So already two homers through 63 at-bats this season for Young. Hit two in 35 games last year where he was primarily the starting first baseman for the Express as a freshman. Getting some start to DH as well. He's at first today as Kinney fires home the 0-1. Breaking ball skips away from the catcher. Snyder all the way to the backstop. Jacoby James will score easily as he trots in from third base on the wild pitch. 3-1 to one now the score with the Express on top in the bottom of the first. And obviously, after the way the first inning, the top of the first inning had gone, you'd probably have some worry if you're the Express offense, but Xander Johnson is going to go back on the mound with a lead at his back as the breaking ball upstairs makes it 3-1 and one on Young. Because a pair of walks, an RBI single, one run came in for Johnson, but... Now you've got a nice lead at your back. Already two runs. Base is empty. One out for Young. And a big swing and a miss. Swing out of his shoes on the fastball on the inside part of the zone. And the count goes three and two. Had a hitter's count. Got a hitter's pitch over the inside part of the zone. Now the count goes full. With one out, the payoff pitch. Fastball foul behind home plate. Off the netting. Stays right there. Young from Binghamton, New York. Son at Chenango Forks High School. Here's the 3-2. Breaking ball. Wave and a miss for strike three. Killer curveball. Catches Young chasing. Out number two. Strikeout number one for Kinney. Brings up A.J. Campy. Campy hitting 262 on the season. First pitch. Breaking ball skied out of play down the right field line. The sole freshman in this lineup for the Express. With a 719 OPS. 12 RBIs. A one pitch. Fouled off behind to him plate. Off the fastball at the top of the zone. And the count goes 0-2 on Campy. Native of Sunrise, Florida. Here's the 0-2. Fastball just low. Count goes 1-2. Re won the score with the Express on top already as the 1 2 is sky down the right field line, giving chase towards the foul pole is Petery. But that is out of play down the right field line. Count stays 1 and 2, looking to win the battle. Here's Kinney's pitch, breaking ball low, evens it up. In the righty righty matchup. Here's Kitty's pitch. Breaking ball low and away. And the count goes 3 2. He's fouled off a couple of tough pitches to battle his way back in the lineup. And Kinney's already got an inflated pitch count here in the first. In his sixth start in a Pioneer uniform. Here's the payoff. Fastball wave and a miss. Rather, he did get a piece of it. Skips off the turf. In front of the catcher, Snyder. 
So he'll stay alive. Just got some metal on it yet again. And we'll do another payoff pitch. Ninth pitch of the at-bat. Breaking ball lined up the middle for a base hit. What a fight by Campy over that at-bat to stay alive. Work the count full. Nine pitches in. Ropes the fastball right back up the middle for a base hit. The fourth hit of the inning for the Express brings up James Camacho with a runner on first and two outs, and that will bring head coach Mike Armstrong out to the mound. He was the AMCC Coach of the Year last year for the first time, leading the Pioneers to the conference playoffs for the last four seasons. And Alfred State looking to, looking to get back to that point. They're 4-4 four and four so far in conference play, and still early on, there's still a lot of noise to be made. Right now, fourth in the conference, top four teams make the playoffs. As the first pitch to Camacho is skied foul over top of the Wells dugout on the first base side out of play. Camacho hitting 346 this season in 13 games for the Express is the 0-1 off speed low. Evens it up at one. Camacho, the sophomore from Huntington, New York. The DH today for Wells, but plays a whole lot of positions all throughout the diamond. As the 1-1 one -one of the sophomore breaking ball low and away, kept in front by Snyder to keep Campy, who's got good speed off of first, right there. Can't be one for two on stolen base attempts this year. He's off on the pitch. And the 1-1 one -one is roped in right field. That's down for a base set. Going first to third on the single off the bat of Camacho is Campy after he got the jump. And back-to-back -back two out singles will bring Lance Phillips to the plate with runners on the corners. Two outs, five hits in the inning for the Express. Continuing to pour it on. And Lance Phillips... Looking to make the lead just a little more. With Camacho off first, can't be off third. First pitch, fastball upstairs. Off on the pitch is Camacho. Throw down to second base, not in time. Just ahead of the throw with a head first dive, Camacho. Gets himself a stolen base. It's his second of the season. And two runners in scoring position. As the 1 0 to Phillips, breaking ball in the dirt makes it 2 0. Phillips, the third baseman today for the Express, hitting 255 with seven RBIs. With a big RBI chance. 1 1, fastball called strike at the top of the zone. Makes it two and one, I should say. As Kinney's two one. Fastball cold strike at the bottom of the zone evens it up. Kinney looking at it, looking again at the big jam, just like Johnson did in the top of the first with three strikeouts. As the breaking ball fouled off the bat of Phillips, didn't pull down the bat and just over the top of his head on a pitch that. Almost scraped the back of his helmet. Skips off the metal. And behind his own plate off the backstop. So it'll stay 2-2. Two two. An unlucky bounce. As the 2-2 two -two fastball outside. And I mean it, that adds to how crucial it is. Because that would be ball four. If he pulls the bat down on the almost hit by pitch. With runners on second and third. Two outs here in the bottom of the first. The 3 2. Fastball grounded sharply to the shortstop. And Keeper, who picks up, shuffles to his left, throws across the diamond in time. Side retired, but not before. Three runs come across for the Express. 
Highlighted by the RBI double off the bat of Jacoby James and Max Odom. 3-1 as we head to the second on AMCC TV. Xander Johnson back out onto the mound at the top of the second. He's now got the lead at his back, 3-1. to one. The Express on top after a pair of clutch RBI doubles by Max Odom and Jacoby James. 7-8-9, due up for the Pioneers, starting with the right-handed hitting Connor Kiefer. First pitch, a fastball up and away to make the count 1-0. Kiefer, the junior shortstop for Alfred State, hitting 233 with 16 RBIs this season. As the southpaw Johnson kicks and fires fastball, Foul behind home plate over the fencing and out of play to make it one and one. Johnson got himself into a tr some trouble with a pair of walks in the top of the first, but got out of it with three strikeouts. There's the one one breaking ball just outside makes it two and one. The sophomore from Homer, New York, who has been dominant in those midweek starts early on in the season. Now it's conference play. 2-1, breaking ball just inside. Kicks off the glove of Izquierdo. Doesn't matter. Count goes 3-1. And obviously, AMCC with all nine teams is one of those conferences that has a lot of midweek games as the 3-1 is sky in a shallow center. Ranging out as the second baseman, Max Odom, just a few steps into the outfield. Behind the second base back, he tracks it down for out number one. Quick first out here in the top of the second. But obviously early on in the season, you've got so many midweek games against out-of-conference opponents, which don't matter in the conference standings. As showing bunt, pulling back, it's a fastball called strike on the outside corner to Devin Mersman, the center fielder for the Pioneers. Those games don't matter all that much against varying talent levels of opponents. But these conference midweek battles are huge as the 0-1 is roped in a deep right center. Sending the right fielder can't be back a few steps. He tracks it down for out number two. And when it comes to conference play and you're playing as many as six games Typically five, six if you've got a weekend series and then a doubleheader during the week that are all conference games. The pitching depth is huge. First pitch fastball called strike at the bottom of the zone to Anthony Snyder, the nine-man and the sophomore catcher for the Pioneers. So the pitching depth, especially in a conference where there's nine teams in the AMCC, as the fastball just outside makes it one and one, or rather did get the outside corner count goes 0-2. When you play all nine teams, the starting pitching depth is huge as the 0-2 fastball called strike three on the outside corner. Fourth strikeout for Xander Johnson. This one backwards to end the inning. Three to one, Wells leads as we have from the second on AMCC TV.
Back in the top, bottom, bottom of the second inning, I should say, three to one. Wells on top. Chris McLean, the nine man, leads it off after eight batters came to the plate for Wells in the first. And the first pitch is sky high, left side of the infield. Third baseman Perinas under a just in front of the bag, tracks it down, drifting towards the shortstop position for out number one. One pitch, one out. And that brings us to the top of the order. Starting with Zach Odom, who singled and came around to score on the double off the bat of his twin brother, Max, back in the first. Zach hitting 380 on this season. First pitch fastball in the dirt. 20 RBIs, which is third on the team. And Zach has been a huge piece of the top of the lineup with Zach, Max, Jacoby James, Aaron Izquierdo. 1-0, grounded sharply down the line. And Fair skipping over the third base bag. Odom on his way to second base. And Zach Odom standing up at second base with a one-out double. Skipping just on top of the third base bag and into the corner. And a runner in scoring position for Max Odom. Two hits on the day for Zach Odom. And Max comes to the plate looking to yet again drive his twin brother in. Already a 3-1 lead for the Express. First pitch to Max. Off speed low. Max with the RBI double in the first. Came around to score then after that on the Jacoby James RBI double. Here's the 1-0. Breaking ball just inside. Makes it 2-0. Max and both Odom twins from Elmira High School where there's actually a lot of players on the Alfred State roster. 2-0. He is skied into deep left field. On the infield, I should say. It's the shortstop keeper who ranges under it and tracks it down. A couple steps behind his position has to reel it in. And out number two to bring up Jacoby James. Kenny looking to spoil the one-out double off the bat of Zach Odom. James with the RBI double his last time at the dish. First pitch. It's a splitter low and in. That's that off-speed pitch that we're seeing a lot of the time out of the hand of Kinney. That splitter that dips in. It's like a sharp changeup. That time almost off the back foot of James. Pickoff attempt over at second base. Back with a head first dive, evading the pickoff play. Is Zach. James with the team lead in RBI is now 27. As he got the second of the day for the Express. 1-0 pitch here. Called a strike on the low inside corner. Makes it 1-1. One one. James. Hitting 424, that's sixth in the AMCC. He's top five in virtually every single category. As the 1-1 one, one pitch, breaking ball line foul. Down the third base line, and the count goes 1-2. James top five in RBIs, extra base hits, total bases. As the pitch blooped in a right field, taking a step in is the right fielder Petery to pick it off and retire the side. One runner left on one hit in the inning. Still 3-1. to one. Wells leads here on AMCC TV.
Back to the top of the order for Alfred State, starting off with Tyler Peter Xander Johnson, the southpaw, back on to work here in the top of the third. 3-1 Express on top is the first pitch from Johnson. It is a fastball called a strike on the inside corner to Peter, who walked and came around to score on the RBI single from Jack Caraba back in the first inning. The sole run on the board today for the Pioneers. As Johnson kicks and delivers, here's the 0-1 pitch. It's a breaking ball low to even it up 1-1. One and one. Xander Johnson, who's been tremendous this season, coming off a great start his last time out against Pitt Greensburg in game two of a doubleheader on April 6th. It's a breaking ball called a strike on the outside corner. Makes it 1-2. and two. Making his second start in conference play as a member of the Express. Kicks and delivers. 1-2. Breaking ball is popped foul down the first base side and over top of the Express dugout. Stays right there at 1-2. and two. The third overall series that the Express are playing in the AMCC is the 1-2 again. Fastball upstairs evens it up. Wells moving over from the NAC where last year they finished 8th of 9 as the 2-2 is grounded sharply. Third base, Phillips throws across the diamond and in time for out number one. Brings up the Pioneers, number three, Elijah Baroness. Brings up Elijah Baroness. The third baseman struck out swinging in his first time at the plate. Fastball up and out on the first pitch from Johnson. Makes it 1-0. Barron is hitting 384 with a 928 OPS this season. As Johnson's 1-0 pitch. Fastball wave and a miss. And the count goes 1-1. 17 RBIs tied for second. On the Alfred State roster, as the breaking ball grounded, right side of the infield, Odom shuffles, throws on to first, and a pair of quick ground balls, and two quick outs, six straight retired, I should say seven straight retired, by Johnson after he had runners on second and third, first and second I should say, with one out, and struck out two to end the inning in the first. With two outs, here's the first pitch. Fastball just dumping away to Tyler Korski, who walked back in the first. Johnson already with four strikeouts. As the pitch is skied foul down the right field line and out of play. Can't be gave it a look in right field. But over the fencing makes it one and one. As Johnson gives the nod, the lefty delivers 1-1. One, one. Fastball up and out. Johnson, part of a strong sophomore class of pitchers on this Wells roster. As the 2-1 pitch, fastball judged upstairs, makes it 3-1. And, and Coach Stevens talked a lot about last year's recruiting class. And just how strong in general there is. 3-1. Breaking ball just upstairs for ball four. To the third walk allowed by Johnson. Snaps his streak of seven straight retired. Now batting for Alfred State, number 24, Jack Caraba. And a runner on first for Jack Caraba, who had the RBI single to knock in Petery back in the first. Put Alfred State on the board. First pitch is fouled off behind zone plate. Out of play. Caraba hitting 324 and 854 OPS and team leading 30 RBIs on the season. That's also third in the AMCC. As Johnson with a pickoff attempt over at first. Head first dive for Korski. No tag applied. For Korski, he's got six stolen bases in seven attempts this season. 
Another pickoff attempt. Another head first slide for, for Korski, who's back in time. Korski's reached base both times today by the walk. Here's the 0-1. Breaking ball dropped in there for a called strike on the outside corner. And Johnson leads in the count 0-2. The southpaw peers in, gives the nod, comes set. Runner on first, two outs. The 0-2 to Caraba. Fastball blooped in a right center field, down for a base hit. Odom will cut it off, going first to third. And sliding in safely at third base is Korski. A pitch just too good over the heart of the plate. Caraba takes it the other way. And a two-out single puts runners on the corners for the cleanup man, or for the five-hitter, I should say. That's Josh Gardner. Now back for off the stage, number 24, Joshua Gardner. So two outs in Gardner, who struck out his last time in the play, looks to continue this inning. Tying run on first. And here's the first pitch to Gardner. Big wave and a miss. Like a foul tip, actually, that got the body of Izquierdo. So an 0 1 count. Gardner, limited at bats this season, has a homer and four RBIs, 18 times to the plate over 13 games. Pickoff attempt over at first base, back with a head first dive is Caraba. He's got two stolen bases in two attempts this season. As Johnson sets, long look over to first. Here's the 0-1 pitch. Breaking ball upstairs makes it one and one. As a steal of home now. And coming in with the head first slide, Gardner advancing the third on the air throw from Johnson. It goes to the backstop. Is Caraba Korski with the steal of home. As Izquierdo was throwing it back to Johnson. Korski took off. And a run comes home. It's a one-run ball game. And the tying run 90 feet away here in the top of the third. And here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. Count goes 1-2. And he's got Caraba in speed 90 feet away. But Johnson looking to end it here. Is the one two pitch it is nubbed on the left side of the infield. James charges, throws off balance onto first, takes Young off the bag, but gets the tag. Now they're going to call the runner safe. Ryan Stevens comes storming out of the dugout. The entire Wells side is not happy about it. They're starting to walk off the field. And it looks like the umpires are going to talk this one over. Wells, the Wells infield at least, is already starting to head back to the dugout. Umpires are going to talk things over, and out is indeed the call. So the inning is over, not before a steal of home. Some drama on top of that. It's a one-run game. 3-2 Wells on top as we head to the bottom of the third on AMCC-TV.
Back in the bottom of the third inning, 3-2, the Express on top. Alfred Schenk gets one run back in the top of the frame on a steal of home by Tyler Korski. Aaron is care to the cleanup man, leads it off against Ryan Kinney. And the first pitch breaking ball low. Makes the count 1-0 on Izquierdo. Grounded out his first time of the plate back in the first inning where all three runs for the Express came across. And it's the 1-0 pitch from the righty Kinney. is the breaking ball looped foul down the right field line over top of the Express dugout. Makes it 1-1. One one. Izquierdo hitting 390 with an OPS of almost 1,200 on the season. The senior in his fourth year as the starting catcher for the Express has put up big numbers as the 1-1 is laced in the left center field. That's down for a base hit. Is Kyoto wide turn around first, pumps the brakes, and a leadoff single here in the bottom of the third for the Express. Brings up Zach Young. The power hitting right-hander who struck out his last time to the dish. Against Kinney, the junior transfer from Louisiana. First pitch, breaking ball upstairs. Kinney from the from Xavier University of Louisiana at the NAIA level. Pitched three seasons there as the 1 0, breaking ball inside. Had some command struggles last year. 27 walks in 32 and a third. Allowed seven homers, but has had relatively good command numbers this year as a pickoff attempt over at first. Is Kierdo, who's got himself 11 stolen bases on the year, back with a dive. But Kinney with better walk to strikeout ratio numbers this year. As the 2-0 is lifted in a deep left field, sending Korski back. He makes the play at the wall. Izquierdo retreats back to first base and a long first out here in the bottom of the third. Brings up A.J. Campy. Who singled in the first. Off on the pitch is Kierdo. Breaking ball outside. Throw it on the second base from Snyder. In time. Tag applied by the second baseman, Kiefer. Brother Walker, I should say. And gunned down is Izquierdo. Trying to snag his 12th stolen base of the year. He'll have to wait. And two outs now after the leadoff single. Here in the bottom of the third. And a 1-0 count on Campy after the breaking ball was outside. 1-0 pitch, and this breaking ball is looped in a shallow center. Coming in his Mersman, he won't get there. So a two-out single that probably would score his Kierdo if he would have stolen second base. And that'll bring up James Camacho. A.J. Campy is two for two on the day. And the freshman has been blazing hot in the middle of the, bot the batting order for the Express. Camacho also singled his last time on the plate back in the first as he takes the first pitch breaking ball called strike at the bottom of the zone. Pickoff attempt over at first. Back just in time with the head first dive is Campy. One stolen base on two attempts this season. It is a breaking ball called a strike on the low inside corner. And it goes 0-2. With a runner on first base, two outs. 0-2 pitch. Breaking ball is grounded sharply to the shortstop. Kiefer picks it up, throws it across the diamond. Picked out of the turf by Caraba for out number three. A pair of fits in the inning. One runner left on base. As we head to the top of the four, three, two, Wells leads on AMCC TV.
Bottom four between Alfred State and Wells. Three to two. The Express on top is Caleb Walker will take in from the left side. The six hitter leads it off for the Pioneers as Xander Johnson, the southpaw, back on to work, and he has been stellar. As the first pitch, he's a breaking ball just outside to make it 1-0 on Walker, who struck out swinging to end the first inning with runners on first and second after Xander Johnson got out of a big-time jam. There's the 1-0 fastball, wave and a miss for strike one. Johnson had runners on first and second with one out and got back-to-back big-time strikeouts of Walker and Gardner. There's the 1-1. Breaking ball, wave and a miss. Makes it 1-2. and two. And then last inning, it was a walk, a single, and then Tyler Korski stole home on Zach Johnson when the southpaw's back was facing third. Got the throw back from Izquierdo, and Korski just took off. Here's the 1 2 fastball low and away. Evens it up 2 2. But that's how Alfred State got their second run to make this a one run game. Here's the 2 2 pitch. Breaking ball skied foul on the left side of the infield and over top of the Alfred State dugout. Out of play. Stays 2 2. Here it is from Johnson. Fastball upstairs. And it'll go full. Walker with four homers, 13 RBIs this season. His four homers is a team lead for the Pioneers. And it's the 3-2. Called strike three on the outside corner. Strikeout number five for Xander Johnson. Went out here in the top of the fourth. Brings up Connor Kiefer into the right-handed batter's box. As the lefty Johnson delivers first pitch, fastball up. Kiefer with a fly ball on the infield his last time to the plate. One homer, 16 RBIs. Kiefer hitting 233 this year as this one is laced in a deep center field, sending Odom a few steps back into his left. And Zach Odom tracks it down for out number two. So a pair of quick outs brings up the eight-hitter Devin Mersman with two dead in the fourth. It's the breaking ball outside to start it off. Some action in left center field in the Alfred State bullpen. The pitcher up and throwing is the 1-0 fastball. Makes it 2-0. Mersman with a homer and 10 RBIs in the year for the Pioneers as the pitch is laced out to deep right field, sending Campy back towards the foul pole that'll bounce foul just to the right off the low wall that's just about two or three feet off the ground that jets out down the line. And a 2-1 count on Mersman. Here's Johnson's 2-1 pitch. Fastball up and away. Makes it 3-1. and one. Johnson delivers. Fastball. Called strike on the outer third. Looking for another 1-2-3 inning. Johnson had one back in the second as well. Here's the pitch. Grounded sharply right back up the middle for a base hit. It's only the third hit of this game for Alfred State. Brings up the nine hitter Anthony Snyder. He struck out looking his last time. So Mersman with his first hit of the day. Long appear over to first and a pickoff attempt 
Back in, standing is Mersman. Snyder from Buffalo, New York, the sophomore catcher. First pitch is nubbed foul towards the on-deck circle where Peter in the top of the order await. Snyder with 16 games, 37 at batch this season. Another pickoff attempt over at first where Mersman back in standing. Mersman 7 for 7 and still in bases, so he's got speed. Garnering the attention of Johnson. Another pickoff attempt. He's caught a run down between first and second. Throw on to second base. Swim move and safe at second base is Mersman. Evades the tag, swimming around. Max Odom, who tried to apply the tag. Some cheeky moves. Gets him out of the rundown, and the game-tying run is in scoring position for Alfred State. As Johnson, in an elevated situation now, comes home 0 one Breaking a ball just outside, evens at 1-1. One and, one. and the top of the order are waiting on deck. You do not want to see any of those names. As Johnson, the 1-1. One, one. Breaking ball popped up. Right side of the infield, Odom drifting around two steps to his left and makes the play to retire the side. One hit in the inning, one runner left on base. Three to two the lead for the Express. Eight nine top of the order due up for Wells back in the bottom of the fourth inning three to two the lead with the Express on top. Alfred State yet again threatening in the top of the frame, but Xander Johnson gets out of it, inducing an infield pop fly off the bat of Anthony Snyder as Lance Phillips digs in from the right side. Ryan Kinney back out of the work, and the righty's first pitch is a breaking ball low and away. Count goes one zero on Phillips, who struck out his last time to the plate. The Express with six hits already on the day, five of which came in the first inning where three runs came, or came across. There's the one who was laced right back up the middle, make it seven.
Brings up Chris McLean with a runner on first to no outs. Top of the order looming. McLean, the sophomore left fielder. Infield fly ball last time. Pickoff attempt over at first where Phillips is back with a dive. Phillips has played in 19 games. Only 51 at bats, but he is been a big piece of this offense. Campy shows bunt, pulls back McLean, I should say. Fastball upstairs for a ball. Makes it 1-0 back pick attempt at first base where Phillips is in. Phillips with a pair of stolen bases attempts. Stolen bases, I should say. He's got two bags in three attempts this season. Showing Bunt McLean again. And this one dropped down third base side. Throw on the first is in time. So the sack Bunt moves Phillips over to second base. And some big insurance in scoring position for the top of the order. Starting with Zach Odom, who's two for two on the day. A single and a double for Odom. Odom, who had an eight-game hit streak, snapped on Saturday in game one against Mount Aloysius. Here's the first pitch. Breaking ball just upstairs. And Mount Aloysius has kind of run the confer conference so far this season. Nine games, they're 8-1. and one, An 18-8 and eight overall record. A five-game win streak. And they've been a lot of the top teams already. Fastball check swing. Did he go around? Yes, he did. Says the home plate umpire. Count goes 1-1. One, one. Aloysius... With a doubleheader sweep over Alfred State as well. With Phillips off a second pace. 1-1 one, one to Odom is low. Played some really strong opponents to start off the season. Montclair State, Swampmore, both ranked. As the 2-1, fastball low and away. And Mount Aloysius currently playing LaRoche after a game one win, 7-4. They've got a 3-0 win and 3-0 lead, I should say, in game two. A full slate of games around the AMCC today is the 3-1. Breaking ball, swing and a miss. Catches Zach Odom off balance. And the count goes 3-2. And, and Mount Aloysius 24-3, a combined score over the doubleheader on Saturday. Wells with some trouble getting the bats going. And here's the 3-2 pitch to Odom. Fastball is roped into right field. And right to the right fielder, P Petery. Petery, I should say. Not deep enough for Phillips to tag from second to third. Hard hit ball the other way. But can't move the runner. And two outs. With a runner on second base for Max Odom. Max has had himself some struggles these last couple of weeks. After coming back from spring break is the first pitch. Waves and misses at the breaking ball. Max is two for his last 23. Both hits have been extra base hits. A solo homer against Greensburg. A double against Mount Aloysius on Saturday in game one. A one pitch is blooped through the left side of the infield. That's a base hit. In the wave around third, Phillips. Here's the throw home cutoff. It's an RBI single for Max Odom, his second RBI hit of the day. As Phillips scores in the express, take a 4 to 2 lead here in the bottom of the fourth. Now batting third, strike number 44, Jacoby James. That'll bring up Jacoby James. And the sack bunt by McLean after the fly out by Odom. You kind of worry about the result. But Max Odom makes it all pay off. With Phillips scoring from second as the first pitch to Jacoby James. He is nubbed foul on the breaking ball. 
reminder, this is a seven-inning game in game one of this doubleheader. Game two will be nine from Aurora. Bottom of the fourth, two outs. With a runner on first pickoff attempt over to first base, and you've obviously got to keep a close eye on Max Odom. He's got 12 stolen bases on the season. He's only been thrown out once. A one to James. Runner off on the pitch. Fastball upstairs. Throw down to second base. Not in time. Couldn't be picked out of the dirt by Walker. Or oh, that is Walker, the second baseman. It looks like took a bounce off the jaw. Taking his time before returning back to his spot. Appears to be all right. Shakes off the training staff. So 13 stolen bases on the year for Max Odom and a 1-1 count on James. Runner in scoring position expressed on top by two. Here's the pitch. Breaking ball inside. James, the team leader in RBIs with 27. Here's the pitch. Breaking ball grounded left side of the infield. Third baseman Barinas on a first to retire the side. But not before one run comes across. On the RBI single for Max Odom. 4-2 to two Wells leads as we head to the top of the fifth on AMCC TV. Top of the order, due up for Alfred State. Back at the top of the fifth, four to two, the lead for Wells. The Express tack on one more in the bottom of the fourth on the RBI single from Max Odom. As Tyler Peter he digs in from the right side, Sander Johnson has been stellar. Back onto the rubber, lefty kicks and fires first pitch fastball upstairs to the leadoff man Peter. He's 0 for one on the day. Walked and scored the first run of this ball game for Alfred State back in the first. Here's the 1-0 breaking ball. Called strike on the outside corner. Evens it up 1-1. One, one. Petery, a 307 hitter at the top of the order for the Pioneers this season. 1-1 one, one pitch. Breaking ball fouled off. Behind zone plate over the screen out of play. And the count goes 1-2. The lefty Johnson fires on the 1-2. Fouled again down the right field line over the Wells. Dunk out and out of play. 
Johnson, through four innings, has allowed only three hits with five strikeouts as the one-two pitch. Breaking ball is nubbed right back to Johnson. Off the mound to his right. Picks up the ball. Throws on a first. A nice barehanded play by Xander Johnson for out number one. Brings up Elijah Barinas, who's 0 for 2 on the day. Johnson with only three walks allowed as well as the first pitch to Barinas. Pop foul on the right field side. Up near the 80 pitch mark now. But as we talked about earlier, it's been... Almost two weeks without a start for Johnson. The Greensburg game was the last time he pitched as the 0-1 is looped in a shallow center. Ranging in Odom. He will make the play on the run. In shallow left center, Zach Odom tracks it down for out number two. Brings up Tyler Korski. The three hitter, two quick outs for Johnson. First pitch, fastball. Pushed outside. And the count goes 1 0. Johnson retired seven straight between the first and the third. He's only allowed two base runners since then. Called strike makes it 1 and 1. Picking up the pace on the rubber here. The 1-1 pitch. Breaking ball nub foul behind to him plate towards the fencing. And it goes 1-2. and two. Looking for his second 3-up, three 3-down three inning of this ball game. Johnson. Kicks and delivers. 1-2. Wave and a miss on the breaking ball. Six strikeouts for Xander Johnson, the final of which comes as part of a 1-2-3 fra frame in the fifth. We head to the bottom of the fifth, 4-2, Wells leads on AMCC TV. Bottom of the fifth, Aaron Izquierdo leads it off for the Express. Wells on top, four to two, as Kenny on to pitch. And the first pitch ball to Izquierdo, who singled back in the third. One for two on the day, hitting 390 on the season. 1 0 pitch to Izquierdo, is a breaking ball looped. Foul towards the on deck circle where Zach Young with a nice play in the first base dugout on the bare hand chopper as the count goes 1 1 on his Kierdo. 
as Kinney rocks and fires 1-1. Breaking ball grounded right back to Kinney. Bounces off his glove behind the mound. Picks it up, throws on it first. Just in time, Miss Kierta was hustling down the line. Made that play a lot closer than it should have been. But regardless, on the 1-3 ground ball, went out and Zach Young will step up. Young's 0 for 2. Flew out to the warning track in deep left field his last time in the dish as he takes a breaking ball called strike at the top of the zone to make it 0-1. Here in the bottom of the fifth, one out. Wells on top for 2 as the 0-1 is grounded to the shortstop, Kiefer, who picks it up with the glove side as he's falling to the ground, gets caught up on the turf. Throws on a first, and it's not in time. That'll be an infield single for Zach Young, who was ranging to his left. Looked like he just got tripped up on the turf as he was trying to shuffle and throw. Got the throw off, but it was low, skipping in the dirt, and Young beat it out. So another hit on the day for the Express. And A.J. Campy up with a runner on first and one out. First pitch to Campy. He's now foul down the right field line. Over top, the Express dugout and out of play. Now 11 hits for the Express. Out hitting Alfred State, who was the top offensive team in the conference last year, 11-3. A one pitch. Breaking ball called strike on the low outside corner. And the count goes 0-2. Campy's 2-for-2 two for two with a pair of singles on the day. As the 0-2 offering, breaking ball is fouled down the right field line again. And out of play onto the golf course here at Wells College. Runs parallel to the first baseline. If you're looking from behind to home plate on the right side of the field. Here's the 0-2. Fastball up and away. Kinney. Hasn't walked anyone. He's struck out one. Zero walks, four and runs over four and a third so far. Pretty low pitch count. He's at 64 right now. One, two. Fastball is skied into shallow left center. Ranging a few steps. Korski tracks it down for out number two. And that'll bring up James Camacho. Camacho one for two on the day. Here's the first pitch. Breaking ball called strike on the inside corner. Camacho singled back in the first. Ground out to shortstop in the third. He's been clutch all season long as a pickoff attempt. Over to first base, Young back in with the dive. Young with one stolen base on two attempts this season as the 0-1 breaking ball dropped in there for a called strike. And Camacho trails in the count 0-2. As Kinney fires home 0-2. Breaking ball grounded down the third base line and foul. Skipping just to the left of the bag where Barinas picks it up. In foul territory, and the count stays 0-2. Camacho has been clutch. Hasn't played in a ton of games, not a ton of at-bats, only 13 games, 26 total at-bats, but hitting 346 out of that span with five RBIs. As the 0-2 again, chopped, where it's backhanded by the second base bag by Walker and throws on a first just in time. For out number three. Side retired. A very nice play by Walker to end the inning. One runner left on base. Four to two. Wells leads as we head to the top of the sixth on AMCC TV.
Back in the top of the sixth, four to two to score with the Express on top. Four, five, six to up in the Alfred State order. And Xander Johnson back on for his sixth inning of work. He has been stellar in his seventh start of the season. Is the first pitch to Jack Caraba. The four hitters lying down the left field line and fair. will roll all the way into the corner. Caraba on his way to second. And he's in there standing with a leadoff double. Here in the top of the sixth. Well, I was going to say Xander Johnson's only allowed three hits. Now make it four. He's still allowed only two runs on four hits and been stellar with six strikeouts. But now he's going to have to work around a leadoff double from Caraba, who's got actually three of the four hits today for Alfred State. As Gardner digs in from the right side, first pitch, fastball low, blocked by Izquierdo, keeps it in front and keeps Caraba on second base. So Caraba's got two singles, a double, and an RBI already on the day after he was all-conference last year. And that'll only boost the batting average from the 324 mark he had entering the day. As the lefty Johnson with a long look over to second base now comes home. And the pitch is nubbed right back to Johnson on the mound. Off the rubber to his left, picks it up with the bare hand, throws on to first base for out number one. And a big out because, obviously, that keeps Caraba on second base. And brings up Caleb Walker. Now batting for Alfred State, number seven, Caleb Walker. Walker in from the left side. He's struck out twice today in both of his at-bats to this point. With the Express on top, 4-2. to two. Johnson looking to keep it right there. Look over to second base at Caraba. Now comes home first pitch in the lefty-lefty matchup. Fastball called strike on the outer third. And it goes 0-1. Walker hitting 267 on the season. Does have four homers, which is tied for third of the AMCC and the lead on this Alfred State team. Long pause for Johnson, 0-1. Breaking ball is skied in a shallow center field where Zach Odom ranges in. It's McLean, McLean in left field drifting over, calls him off in shallow left center for out number two. So after the leadoff double, two quick outs. Connor Kiefer will look to extend the inning. Digs in from the right side. He's 0 for 2 on the day. With a fly ball to second base and a center field. Johnson's first pitch to Kiefer. Breaking ball, big wave and a miss. And the count goes 0-1. Garaba has been such a big piece of this team with 30 RBIs in the season, which by far leads the squad, third in the conference. Looking to get driven in here by the bottom of the order. As the fastball 0-1, just outside, evens it up 1-1. Kiefer, a 223 hitter with 16 RBIs and a homer this season for the Pioneers. Johnson's 1-1 pitch. Off speed in the dirt. Gets a step away from his Kyoto, who goes down to all fours to keep it in front. But not far enough for Karaba to advance. Here's Johnson's 3-1. Fastball low and in. Only three walks allowed by Johnson as well, who's had some command struggles this season. 19 walks in 22 and two-thirds entering today. Relatively strong on that front so far, though, as the 3-1 fastball low and away make it four walks. And that'll bring up Devin Mersman. But first, Ryan Stevens is going to take a walk out to the mound. Looks like there's been some action in the bullpen. Let's see if that'll be it for Johnson, and that will be. Xander Johnson, after a stellar outing, departs this game with runners on first and second. At the top of the sixth, two outs when we come back.
Xander Johnson's day is done. And on for the four-out save is Cam Heyman, the right-handed junior from Windsor, California, with three saves, leading the team this season. Enters the game with runners on first and second. Two outs at the bottom of the sixth, 4-2 Wells on top. And a first pitch breaking ball called strike at the top of the zone to Devin Mersman, who represents the go-ahead run. With a tie run on first base, Mersman's one for two with a single on the day. Heyman looking to lock it down. This is a seven-inning game, game one of this doubleheader. As the 0-1 pitch, fastball upstairs, evens it 1-1. One one. Heyman, nine appearances. He's 1-0, three saves, 10 and a third innings, 12 strikeouts, seven earned runs. As the righty sets, delivers 1-1. One one. Off speed just inside. And the count goes 2 and 1. Snyder 0 for 2 in the on deck circle. Should he come up with what would be a go ahead run on base? Heyman's 2 1. Breaking ball is skied in a shallow center. Ranging out is the second baseman, Max Odom. A few steps into the outfield turf. He tracks it down. Heyman gets the job done and strands two runners on base. One hit in the inning. Four to two. Wells leads as we head to the bottom of the sixth. Final chance for Wells to tack on some insurance before Heyman returns to the mound in the seventh, looking to lock it down. Back in the bottom of the six, sixth inning, Ryan Kinney back on to close it out. And for Wells, it's their final opportunity to get some runs on the board. Four to two, Express on top at the bottom of the sixth. And this is a seven inning game. So the Express will look to put some more runs on the board before Cam Heyman returns to the mound in the seventh for the four out save. First pitch, fastball call strike right at the bottom of the zone. Phillips singled and scored in the fourth. He's one for two in total today in game one of this doubleheader between the Express and the Pioneers. Here's the 0-1. It's fouled down the right field line out of play. As Kinney, right around the 75 pitch mark, throwing five innings, four runs allowed, 11 hits. Off the bat of the Express. We've got four runs on the board. As the fastball upstairs makes it one and two. Kinney hasn't allowed a walk and only one strikeout. So that's why his pitch count's so low. 
Only 73 through five innings of work is a breaking ball low. Makes it two and two. Phillips hitting 255 on the season for the Express. And his kidney delivers home the breaking ball and it's popped up in a shallow center. Couple steps in for Mersman, the center fielder, and ranges under it for out number one. That'll bring up Chris McLean, the sophomore left fielder. Fly out to third bank to the second sack bunt in the fourth for McLean. Against Kinney, the NAIA transfer. First pitch, fastball up and away. Kinney, who is initially from pretty far away as well in Polk County, Florida, making his way up to Alfred State. This season has the 1 0 pitch. Breaking ball just inside. Kinney was connected to Alfred State by a friend of Coach Armstrong's and eventually made his way up for a visit. Loved the visit and committed to come play at Alfred State. There's a wave and a miss on the fastball at the top of the zone. Obviously, a very different everything from both Lafayette, Louisiana, where his first school was. And Polk County, Florida. And here's a 2-1 wave and a miss at the top of the zone. Kinney at Xavier University of Louisiana. In his time there, actually played two seasons for the Batavia Muck Dogs in the Perfect Game Collegiate Baseball League, which is right here in western New York. And here's a 2-2. Breaking ball low and away. So a little bit of an upstate New York connection before making his way to Alfred State. With one out, here's the 3-2 to McLean. Fastball called strike three at the bottom of the zone. McLean already a few steps up the first baseline. Tossed his back towards the first base dugout. Thought he had himself ball four. Instead, strikeout number two on the day for Kinney. That's why his pitch count has been so low. I think that's the only, only the third full count that a batter has seen is the first pitch breaking ball. Just low to Zach Odom, the leadoff hitter. He's two for three on the day with a double and a run scored. And his Kinney comes home 1 0. Breaking ball inside. Actually, while at Xavier University of Louisiana, which plays all the top teams in NAIA, Kinney actually got a start and threw a gem against the number three team in the country. And he's a 2 0. Breaking ball low and away. LSU Shreveport, they're the number three team in the nation as of now. And last season, he threw four innings, one run, two hits, five strikeouts against them. And Wells with some big-time results today on the offensive side. Fastball upstairs. Ball four to Odom. So what are both rarities for Kenny? A walk and a strikeout. Coming back-to-back -back here in the bottom of the sixth. And it looks like that may be all she wrote for Kenny. As Mike Armstrong takes the walk out to the mound. Don't think I've seen a signal yet. And doesn't taking the ball from Kinney. Meeting with the entirety of the infield on the rubber to talk things over. And it will be a new pitcher who will enter this ball game with a runner on first base. Two outs in the bottom of the sixth. 4-2 Wells leads when we return.
Chris Baldwin is the new pitcher for Alfred Stane, who takes out Chris Baldwin. Bottom of the sixth, two outs, runner on first base, a 4-2 lead for the Express. And the two-hitter, Max Odom, up to the plate with his twin brother, Zach, off of first base as Baldwin, the sidewinding right-hander from Patchogee, New York, delivers the first pitch. And this one is legs deep down the left field line, sending Korski back towards the wall, and that'll bounce off the wall just to the right of the foul, tear, foul pole. It's fair. Throw home on the relay, sliding home safely at home plate is Zach Odom on the RBI double by Max Odom on the first pitch out of the hand of Baldwin in relief. 5-2, Wells extends the lead on the third RBI hit of the day, second RBI double for Max Odom. Talked about it earlier, he's had some struggles at the plate these last couple of weeks. And what a game is James Big wave and a miss at the first pitch breaking ball. James, excuse me, Odom entered today, two for his last 23. He's three for three today with two RBIs, three RBIs. Here's Baldwin's 0-1 to James. Breaking ball just low and away. James one for three, had an RBI double. Here's the one one, breaking ball called a strike on the inside corner, and the count goes one two. Baldwin looking to send the Alfred State bats up in the top of the seventh, down by only three. James looking to add to that. Breaking ball low and away. Makes it two and two. And what's been a pretty eventful game so far with 12 hits for Wells, five runs. Alfred State has two runs on four hits. One of those was a straight steal of home as well. Two, two. Fastball just inside and the count goes full. Cam Heyman, in all likelihood, returning back to the mound. Looking for the four-out save after he came in with two outs in the top of the frame. Here's a 3-2. Breaking ball just outside. And Jacoby James works himself a walk. Three straight base runners all coming with two outs for Wells. Runners on first and second for Aaron Izquierdo. Is Kierdo up with two outs and runners on first and second. Wells on top by three. Bottom of the sixth of this seven inning ball game as the first pitch is sky high behind zone plate. Snyder gives it a look towards the on deck circle, ranges towards the fence, and that's out of play. Makes it over the fence, and the count will go 0 and 1 on Is Kierdo. For Chris Baldwin this season, who takes the mound, takes the mound, three appearances. He's 1 and 0 in four and a third innings. He's allowed four runs with three strikeouts. That was actually his first walk of the season, which came to Jacoby James. Here's the 0-1. Grounded sharply down the left field line. Fair. Foul. The late call by the home plate umpire. Just to the left of the chalk. Over top of the third base bag. And it'll be 0-2 on his Gierdo. Is Gerdo, after a couple of tough foul balls, shot that ball down the line. Looks to move it a couple feet fair this time. Another 0-2 pitch coming from Baldwin with Odom off second. And James off first breaking ball away. And the count will go 1-2. Obviously, Baldwin's thrown away from his Gerdo after that liner on the third base side. Izquierdo has been clutch all season. Here's the one-two. 
Breaking ball poked foul down the right field line, giving it a look. Caraba, the first baseman, towards the fence, and that makes it just over the fence. Padding was jets out down the right field line in the corner, and it makes it out of play. So the at-bat extends for the express catcher. He's one for three on the day, which for Izquierdo's standards is below. He's hitting 390 on the season. Hits in, his ten of, hits in 10 of his last 11. Pickoff attempt over at first base. Caught in between second and third now is Odom in the rundown. Tag is applied. Just caught caught in between second and third. Made a move towards third base and just got his feet lost under him and tagged out by the shortstop keeper to end the inning. So one runner left on base. One hit in the inning. It's the RBI double by Max Odom. To make the score 5-2 to two as we head to the last of it. Top of the seventh. Cam Hammond needs three outs to lock it down here in game one of this doubleheader between the Express and the Pioneers. Cam Heyman back onto the rubber looking to lock it down. On the top of the seventh in, in, in a seven-inning game, one of this doubleheader between Wells and Alfred St. 5-2. to two. Wells on top, and Cam Heyman will look to shut it down. Looks like first we're going to see a pinch hitter. Anthony Snyder was set to dig into the batter's box. And the pinch hitter will be Aiden Murphy, the sophomore catcher from Syracuse, New York. As Heyman peers in, Murphy in from the right side. As Heyman, the junior transfer, delivers home first pitch. Aspel called a strike on the outside corner. And the 0-1 from Heyman, striking ball low. Murphy this season has played in 16 games. He's split catching duties with Anthony Snyder, who departs this 1-0 for 2. Eight RBIs and a 283 average on this season. As Heyman delivers home. Fastball upstairs. Here's the pitch. Breaking ball skied into deep center. Odom takes a couple steps back. Now in a couple and to the right. And out number one. Number nine, 
Looks like we'll see another pinch hitter at the top of the order. And it will be Cole Schroffstetter, the freshman outfielder, takes the first pitch ball, makes it 1-0. Schroffstetter, nine games, nine at bats. He's one for nine with a pair of walks. Called strike on the outside corner with the fastball out of the hand of Heyman. And the count goes 1-1. One, one. Takes out Petery. Finishes day 0 for 2 with a walk and a run score. Breaking ball upstairs. Makes it 2-1. and one. As Heyman looking to lock it down. Here on the top of the seventh, the 2-1. Breaking ball called strike at the bottom of the zone. Evens it up 2-2. Two and two. Would be Heyman's fourth save of the season, which leads the Express. It's fourth in the AMCC. In the righty-lefty matchup, Heyman rocks delivers. Breaking ball judged up and away. And that'll bring us a payoff pitch. Arena is at least his spot in the order in the on deck circle. Here's the 3 2. Breaking ball. Called strike three on the inside corner. Schroffstetter goes down looking, and Heyman one out away from locking it down in the seventh. First strikeout of the day for Heyman in relief. Seventh overall for the Wells pitching staff is Elijah Barinas back in from the right side. First pitch breaking ball just inside. Barinas 0 for 3 on the day. Jack Caraba actually has three of the four Pioneer hits. So Devin Mersman is the only Alfred State player with another. As the breaking ball is looped foul left side of the infield. Phillips picks it up behind the third base coach's box. Wells has the chance to actually jump up two spots in the AMCC standings and move into what would be a, a tie, but they would obviously have the tiebreaker with the Pioneers. 0-1 with a sweep today as the breaking ball upstairs evens it up. Because Alfred State's 4-4. Four and four. They could, in theory, move to 6-6. Six and six, excuse me, to four and six, while the Express would move to four and four with a doubleheader sweep for Wells as the 1-1 one, one is looped in a left center field in for a base hit over the head of James and a two-out single. So the hopes stay alive. That's only the fourth hit of the day for the Alfred State offense. And while we talk about that, you got to talk about how dominant Xander Johnson was on the mound. As Tyler Korski, he's walked twice today and scored a run in from the right side with a runner on first. First pitch breaking ball in the dirt blocked by Izquierdo. Xander Johnson went five and two-thirds, allowing only four hits, two runs, with six strikeouts, another stellar outing after a gem against Greensburg his last time out as well. 1L, breaking ball, wave and a miss. Barinas with 15 stolen bases in the year off of first base. But obviously, his run doesn't matter. In a three-run ball game, the on-deck batter would be the game tire. As the breaking ball low makes it two and one on Korski. Who's got three homers, seventeen RBIs in the season. Here's the two one. Fastball up and in. And a three one count. 
Heyman looking to lock down the command as well. Five walks and ten and a third so far this season for Heyman. And he's a breaking ball looped in his center. Ranging in Odom. He makes the play on the run in shallow center. Heyman locks down the save. And the Express with a 5-2 to two win here in game one of this doubleheader between the Pioneers and the Express. In their first year of the AMCC, the Express have taken the first game that they see the team that was play, picked to finish first in the preseason poll. They were the regular season champion last year in the AMCC. And the Express take them down in game one, 5-2. to two. We'll be back in about 30 minutes for game two when we come back. But signing off for game one, I'm Eli Fishman saying so long. Again, keep it right here on AMCC TV and Wells Athletics. Game two, a nine-inning game between Wells and Alfred State coming up after this.